Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, Daniel here. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at Adventure Tactics, Domain's Tower. Um, this is a game that I had never heard of up until about a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago, when uh, my buddy Jerry Hawthorne mentioned it on the Dungeon Dive Facebook group. And um, I have learned to, whenever Jerry mentions a game, to at least take a closer look at it because it usually means that there's something interesting going on. And that is totally true for this game. Um, at its core, I think you could call this game uh, maybe like my first Gloomhaven. And I do not mean that in any derogatory way. Just if you were to explain it very quickly to a friend, you could say that and your friend would get an idea of what this game is, especially if they've played Gloomhaven, because at its core, you are going to be taking a character. That character is going to be represented by a deck of cards. Those cards will represent abilities, and you're going to be creating a deck, and you're going to be participating in a co-op skirmish game while working through a spiral-bound campaign game. Okay, so that might be where the Gloomhaven comparisons end. This is a game I think I actually like more than Gloomhaven, and we'll talk a little bit about why. But this game is absolutely delightful. Um, just the cover art, this is the art of the, on, on the box and on the cover of the rule book, is very well done, and it does perfectly kind of capture the spirit of this game, as does the name. Um, anybody who was into tactical, Role-playing games probably remembers games like Vandal Hearts and Final Fantasy Tactics, which I think this game is taking a lot of influence from. Now, at its core, it is a co-op skirmish game, and the skirmish game itself is relatively simple. There are different elements that the rules introduce as you go through the campaign. The main complaint I have about this game is the environments on which the skirmishes take place. They are very boring and there is almost no interaction between the characters and the environment. You are just kind of playing on a chess board. I guess my only other complaint is the quality of the cardboard. This game does come with large player mats However, mine are so warped that it is impossible to use. I mean, they are curved to where you can't even use them. And as you can see, my tiles are incredibly warped as well. This is a known problem. There is a thread on BGG and the designer, the publisher has spoken to their printer. They have registered complaints and they are going to be doing what they can to fix it probably offering replacements in the upcoming Kickstarter for the expansion. But everything else in the game is super high quality, especially the standees. Oh my God. Um, man, two great standee games in a row. First we had Dungeon Crusade with those amazing standees and now we have Adventure Tactics. We need more games with standees like this, guys. And to illustrate that point even further, for some super odd reason, this game includes just a few miniatures of the heroes. And let's look at those in comparison. Look how tiny they are. And there's just absolutely no reason to include this plastic in the game because you only get a few for the heroes. They are completely the wrong scale. I mean, when your heroes are going up against little goblins, but you use the minis, the heroes are tiny. They're smaller than the little goblin minions. And even if you were to paint this with the best paint ever, there is no way it would ever look better than this amazing standee. And you get so many cool ones like this giant here or this dragon. And there are a ton of awesome standees in this game with great art. And I absolutely love it for that reason. So the three heroes I am playing as are these three. I chose uh, the three uh, female characters here. We have Roberta, we have Quill, and we have Olette. And the best thing about this game is the way that you create your character and the way you level up your character. As far as I'm concerned, 
this game sets a new standard for leveling up in a fantasy adventure game. If games coming up don't have a system like this, I think I'm going to be somewhat disappointed because there is so much, so many great choices you make and every time you add cards to your deck, it is exciting and it makes you want to complete the campaign to work your way through this story so you can level up and you can work on your character. Now there are two other characters that come with the game. We have Elwyn and Tolvin. So I'm not using them. I don't have no I have zero cards in their decks now. But let's take a look at a character and you'll kind of see what I am talking about. And we're also going to take a look at the cards because the cards are a crucial element to this game. So here is the box. And as you can see, the game comes with a ton of cards. And when you create your character at the beginning, you're going to choose one of five starting classes. The starting classes are a fighter, a wizard, a cleric, a rogue, and an archer. So your basic kind of five D&D &D archetypes. And then when you take your uh, starting character, you're going to take its card here, the starter fighter, level one fighter. It's going to tell you how much health your character starts with. It's going to tell you a class feature, which is for the fighter is shake it off. And a class feature is a card that you can take into battle that is going to give you um, special abilities. In this case, shake it off. The fighter is able to self heal. So that's really nice. It's also going to tell you a passive ability that you get to, uh, to take into battle. And the passive ability for the starting fighter is tough. And that gives, that allows the um, fighter to add three hit points to their maximum. And the maximum hit points of a fighter right now is seven. If you take tough into battle, you get uh, three more hit points. As your character grows, you're going to be getting more passive abilities. And as you play, each time you uh, go into a new scenario, you're going to pick three of the passive abilities available to you to take with your character. The starting class is also going to tell you which uh, cards you're going to add to your deck. So you're going to add a basic action, two charges, and two rock tosses. In addition, you're also going to take a certain number of basic moves and basic attacks. I believe your starting deck is something like 11 cards. You have a certain number of basic attacks, basic moves, plus any cards from your class. Now, as you go through the game, well, let's take a look at the cards real quick. The cards are gonna show you uh, what basically what you can do. You have a charge, you can take a basic move with a plus one movement in any direction and move through characters. A basic move, you can take your character's basic move stat, which is on your character card here. You're gonna have a basic move of four for the fighter and a basic attack range of one with a basic red D6 for combat. And the uh, dice range in different uh, styles here. You have white dice, black, blue, and red. And those are gonna give you different values depending on the strength of your character. Then you have your basic attack, which allows you to do your basic attack. Uh, rock toss, this allows the uh, fighter to throw a rock. It does um, one white D6 worth of damage, and it allows you to push a target away from you. Now, as you level up, you're going to be adding new um, class cards to your character. So I chose to go up to a level two fighter, which that means I'm now going to add five health to that total. And I'm going to add two mighty strike cards to my character deck. And so we're here, we have the two mighty strike cards. It says a range one attack, and it allows me to use two D6 for attacking and I, um, the target becomes slowed, so it adds a penalty to the target, a condition. But the really neat thing is as you start adding more level up cards, you can become different classes. And this is where the kind of the Final Fantasy Tactics job system influence uh, comes in, because there are a huge number of level up cards. You can take any basic class, I believe up to level five. 
Then as you start leveling up, if you are a level one fighter, you could say, well, my next level up, I want to become also a level one rogue, in which case you would add some rogue cards and powers to your deck. Well, then you could say, I want to be a level one fighter with some rogue abilities and maybe some cleric abilities. So then you could start as a level one cleric, add that to your deck, take some more health, get some more passive features, and some more cards to add to your deck. Now what's really cool though, is as you start combining different classes, you will actually be able to level up to elite classes. For instance, if you were to be a level one fighter and a level one archer, at your next opportunity to level up, you can become a gladiator. In which case, you would take the gladiator card from the uh, class characters, and then this would be your new, um, your new class. You would become a gladiator. And then you can start leveling up different um, abilities and different class subclasses under the gladiator banner. You can become a demon hunter, a dark knight, a champion, a bishop, a beast trainer, a bard, a barbarian, an assassin. These are the basics, a wizard, a rogue, and then one of the classes, I think it's the wizard, can summon different uh, creatures to help them fight. So there are just an absolute ton of options. Um, yeah, you become a fighter one and a wizard one, both level one and fighter and wizard, you become a dark knight. You can become a fighter wizard rogue and become a war mage. You can be a cleric rogue and become a monk. You can have a rogue and archer and become a skirmisher. Cleric and wizard become a shaman. And there are just a ton of examples, ton of options, so many level up options. And each one of these is going to give you different cards to add to your deck with different passive abilities and also different dice manipulation abilities, which we'll take a look at in a minute. On top of all the level up cards, you also have all of your action cards. These are the cards that you're going to be adding to your deck that are going to be giving you uh, your abilities, your bonuses and that kind of thing. Now. Unlike Gloomhaven, or not Gloomhaven, but um, like uh, games like uh, Gears of War, um, Fire Team Zero, the cards in your hand don't represent your HP. You have a special, you have a separate pool of HP, so you're going to be using your your deck of cards. You're going to be going through it multiple times in a skirmish. However, some of the more powerful cards you can use one time and then you have to discard from the game until the next skirmish. So there are also these abilities that you can get. We looked at uh, one, the tough, was these, were these um, passive abilities, which you, uh, as you level up, you will gain more passive abilities depending on the class that you take. And then you can start adding these to your character. You can take up to three with you in a skirmish, in a loadout to manipulate the game in all kinds of different ways. Additionally, you will eventually unlock these um, dice passive abilities, which you can take up to two of these with you. And these offer up all different kinds of ways to manipulate the dice rolls, to re-roll, to mitigate luck, and just to offer up other tactical um, decisions that you can make. There are also decks for loot, supply decks for loot, which as you earn loot, you're going to be adding supplies from or loot from the supply deck into your party deck. You can take in um, different weapons. So there will be a whole variety of different weapons that you can get as you fight different bosses. You can actually gain their weapons and their armor. And then each character can take into battle one piece of armor, one weapon, and I think some kind of like trinket, an accessory. And those are gonna give you um, different bonuses. They're gonna give you different attacks to do. And so you can start building up your character with abilities and with items and those passive abilities and those dice abilities. And then what else? Um, there are different market class or different uh, market decks, which as you go through the campaign, you will add cards to the market. And at certain points in the campaign, you can actually go and visit those markets and buy things or sell things. So just a huge number of options in how you build your character. And that is where this game 
really, really shines. And I love this class guide that the game comes with because it tells you how you're going to be, how you can build your character. Now you don't have to become one of the elite characters. You could just, or you, I guess you, you eventually do because the highest level you can go up to is 10, but the highest any one class can go up to is level five. So if you really like the fighter, you could take that fighter up to level five before choosing to go on to start adding other classes to your character deck. So there is just there are an abundance of choices and there's going to be more. There's a hero pack expansion that will soon be available. I actually pre-ordered it on Amazon. I think it comes out the first week of February and they are currently working on new expansion for Kickstarter uh, this year, I believe, which is going to add even more. I'm really hoping that they do more to the actual skirmish maps to make the environments and the locations more interesting. Because while there are some walls and things you're going to be adding, you're basically, you, you are just kind of moving on a chessboard. You're moving towards opponents. You're, you're killing them. You're wiping them out. They are respawning on certain points. And um, the, the actual game itself is rather simplistic, but it does, they do add some, some, they do throw in some monkey wrenches into the works. For instance, this map here, it's almost like a football game. Um, I'm starting my characters on one side and I have to deliver this uh, special orphan baby all the way to the end, to the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> down there and I can actually discard a card to pass this baby like a football in between my different uh, characters while the monsters while these goblins and these wraiths and this uh, goblin boss here while they are trying to uh, also kidnap the baby this is kind of like a game of like of a tactical game of like blood bowl here uh, it's it's pretty cool the, the scenarios do add in some interesting elements like that i just wish the tiles were a little more interesting with more things to interact with the minions the the enemies each time you play a, a game you're going to be told to take out one of the boss decks and there are a ton of them again there are so there are so many cards in this game so while the game may seem somewhat simple on the surface there is a lot of variety so if you're into a lot of variety i think this is a really good game for you and each one of these boss decks is going to as you play when it's the enemy turn you're going to draw a card and it's going to tell you what the boss does what the minions do and it's also going to tell you to refer to stat blocks in the campaign book which are going to um, augment the cards so you will have each of the enemies will have different thing different stats in the book with their powers with their movement with their range and then any special abilities that they have that might trigger based on the cards that you drew and i'm going to show you a couple things here this just the very beginning to kind of show you the choices you have during the campaign because it's not just a basic kind of uh, follow the story campaign you do have some choices and they seem to be um, relatively meaningful so as you start the game it's going to give you a little bit of a backstory it's going to kind of tell you a little bit about your characters it's going to tell you where your characters come from what they are doing before the game starts and then it's going to start off right off the bat with a choice to, for two scenarios, you can guard the gate or you can investigate the alarm. If you ever see one of these skull symbols on a choice, that means that this is the more difficult path. So I went to investigate the alarm, which you go here, and then it tells you your setup, it tells you your little story, your objective, your bonus objective, and then it tells you your enemies, how to set up for three heroes, how to set up for four to five heroes, what kind of reinforcements are gonna be added, um, any additional tokens. So all of your rules, all of your per scenario rules are all on one page, which is really nice. And then when you uh, beat that scenario, you turn over to the page and it tells you what you get if you do your success, what you do if you have your bonus success, what happens if you fail, and then it gives you another choice. Here you could pursue the goblins or you could rest and investigate. So I did the bonus success on this mission. I got to add some supplies to my party loot. I got to add a couple little story perks. Um, I got to add um, an encrypted note, which 
I was able to use over here because I chose the rest and investigate, which allows you to decrypt the note. And then when you decrypt the note, you get to go on to here and make other choices. So each of the while these are all numbered, each number does not just represent a battle map. There are story um, breaks. There are different things to do within the campaign guide and different choices you are going to make, which are going, which each choice is going to have you face off against different enemies and do different kinds of things throughout the game. So really highly, highly um, recommended. Yeah, I couldn't think of the word recommended. Uh, this is a neat game. Now I ordered it retail off Amazon and it got shipped from Noble Knight Games. And for some reason they threw in this side quest guide, which was kind of ripped up. It got kind of messed up in the box. But I don't know if this comes with every um, copy of the game, but this just adds a couple little side quests that you can add in to the campaign, or you can play these as one-off uh, scenarios if you just want to uh, mess around with the game. But uh, yeah, that, oh, let's take a look at these crazy, like talk about overproduction here. You're, you, um, at the top of each turn, you're going to lay out a initiative track. I love initiative tracks. And the uh, tokens for the initiative track here are these super heavy duty, uh, like poker style chips. So uh, this is, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I mean, all the rest of this game is kind of like, you know, pretty standard cardboard and some pretty poor uh, miniatures, but then you get these really hefty poker chips for the initiative uh, track. And yeah, it's it's kind of nice. It's not needed, but I'll, I'd be lying if I say it wasn't cool to hold those in your hand. But yeah, this is a neat game. Um, it comes highly recommended. I think it is a perfect like family style game. If you want to introduce your family or kids to this kind of adventuring uh, tactical game with interesting decisions with really cool characters. I like that there are a lot of female characters. That is a huge bonus, especially for families. I know that I've talked to a lot of gamers recently who their daughters, just they love it when games come with high quality, you know, uh, just well represented female characters that gets them more into the game. So that is really cool. It comes with a ton of different different enemies, all of your awesome standees that you're gonna get. And there are even more in the, in the game there. Um, tons of cards, tons of options, but also a relatively simple game that is easy to learn from the rule book. No, really no issues at all. And you can get set up and playing within just a few minutes. And uh, yeah, this is highly recommended. I am really looking forward to playing this more. And um, I'm super happy that uh, Jerry mentioned it because I it was not on my radar whatsoever. So that is Adventure Tactics. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.